the Navi, the blue sapient aliens from the rainforest moon of Pandora. As deep their culture, as intricate is their world. What if we gave them a spec evil redesign? Hello everyone, y'all know the Navi. Hello. No, I mean the ones from Avatar. No, the James Cameron ones. There you go. As good a design as they are, they stick out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of their ecosystem. So we're going to dive deeper and redesign them to be more alien. If you dig this concept, please use your head thingies to bond with the like and subscribe buttons and to hype this video. And now, without further ado, let's get started. So, these guys will be something fun to work with, since the Avatar movies are already borderline spec evil as it is. With an amazing degree of care put into its world, the designs of its creatures and how they interact, beginning at the ground level and stopping right before the Navi, who are just blue people. Yeah, I always felt that was a bit weird. But how can we change them up by using the in-universe data we have on Pandora and the ecosystems there? Well, let's begin with some basic anatomy. All organisms on this moon have six limbs, and usually three digits per hand. I've read a theory that the arms of the Navi simply fused. But why do that just to make them more human and less like the rest of the organisms made there? So for this design we are going to do just that. Keep the two legs and four grasping limbs. But dividing them at the elbow to make them more similar to the Prolemuris, which is supposed to be their relative. They would have then two sets of arms. One much stronger for climbing and hunting and a smaller one for dexterous manipulation, while its feet will also become much more prehensile. This, along with their tail, would be very helpful as an adaptation to their marked arboreal lifestyle. And while it may seem weird for such large organisms being arboreal, that's taken care of by the source material. Pandora has much lower gravity than Earth, meaning organisms can grow larger before being constrained by their weight also meaning falls from the heights they live in would carry less velocity and thus be easier to withstand. The fact that most megafauna in this moon have bones reinforced with carbon fiber, which is both light and strong, helps in them reaching and sustaining these sizes. Following on this, I gave them breeding holes near the chest and shoulder area, with gills a bit below that would expel the products of respiration again, which many Pandoran species show. And while this basic anatomy is consistent among the Navi, there seems to be a lot of variation between populations, with the ones living near water having limbs and tails adapted to swimming. Like this! Meaning this species has either high mutation rates, or more likely, very fast generational replacement. Despite these changes, we did retain their bioluminescent spots. I mean, I'm not a monster. These are likely used as a form of communication, a warning display, or as camouflage by the many Pandoran organisms that have them. And in the Navi, they present enough variation to serve for intraspecies identification. I'll speculate that this work by applying low electrical discharges, produced naturally by the body, to light up captured xenon, which is found in great quantities in the Pandoran atmosphere. And, speaking of Pandora, it is a moon that orbits a huge planet, and light reflecting from it and from other moons at their own rhythms means the day-night cycle is nothing short of chaotic. Hence, I propose the blue pigment common to life on Pandora is tied to stopping photons from altering their internal biochemistry, as in our planet, photons are known to signal certain components in our biology to let us know whether it's night or day. In Pandora, this is avoided cutting the link between photon availability and internal rhythms, and essentially letting them sleep in damned peace. Now let's get to my favorite part, the head. The Navi are very feline coded, so I decided to base the design on the big cats of Pandora, the Thanator, including a longer snout, better to grip and rip prey with. This, however, would not be tied to ancestry but the convergent evolution, as the Navi ancestors were likely predators, given their partial carnivory and forward-facing eyes, 
as well as stripes similar to those of tigers that would help them stay hidden while hunting. Speaking of eyes, Navi have two, while most large fauna on Pandora have four. So let's give them just that. One forward facing set, important for measuring distances when hunting and moving through the trees, and a secondary set located at the sides to help them stay aware of their surroundings. Their hair also had to go, as Pandora's denser atmosphere would cause greater heat retention, thus explaining why a big part of the moon is covered in lush rainforests. Which look just like those of Earth, but we're going to vibe with that as it is. So, life forms living in this ecosystem, with lots of heat and little sunlight, would have no need for a protective fur cover, as seen in all other organisms on the moon. Hence, their hair was reduced to bristles or quills, which would be very helpful in intraspecies communication without being a completely novel character, unlike hair. But, of course, these lads wouldn't be complete without their trademark ponytails, their neural cues. Again, unlike most life on Pandora, the Navi have one of these instead of the usual two, so I just gave them two cues. However, they would still tie them together into a ponytail so it doesn't catch on things as they move and do things. See? It worked out in the end. And well, these cues take us to Ewa the massive network that covers almost the entire planet, guiding and balancing its ecosystems. In a Specky Boy 5, well, Specky Boy 5 their version, my proposal was that this ecosystem spanning network consists of copies and reproductions of the electrical signals of other organisms, taken by a variety of plant and fungal-like organisms across the environment. And the question is, why do they do it? Well, to obtain important information about this environment, such as climate conditions, water availability, migrations, and such. Any organism would find it useful to connect to obtain this information, and in the process would give the network even more information to redistribute. And the Navi, being sapient, would even be able to recognize the signatures of determinate species and individuals they find when bonding or even using it to bond with other organisms for mutual gain. This network would, I'd imagine, still count as the Navi's goddess for all intents and purposes. And last before we go, let's change that scientific name. Their canon name is Homo Pandorus, which, come on. Binomial nomenclature serves to identify, but also to indicate relations between organisms, and Homo Pandorus would mean these aliens from who knows where in space are closely related to humanity. Nah, let's do something else. Being sapiens, I think they should choose their own name, like we did with dwarves, and I think they'd probably choose something similar to Otral Navi Ewani, or Ewa's Tree People. And that's it for Speculative Biology Redesign of the Navi. So, you heard the notes during this one already. I felt, with the original material having such spec evo vibes, it was pointless to try to reimagine the whole thing, with me only touching on some aspects of the Navi, their moon, and their ecosystem, while giving my rationale for the changes we made. Of course, there were many ways to implement set changes, as many artists have shown in the past. But I wanted to keep the sort of mammalian, sort of reptilian look of the rest of Pandora's fauna, and their clear feline inspiration, as well as their spindly anatomy, coalesced into this design which I love and I'm really happy with. So, there you go. I hope you had fun with this one, and please let me know if you'd like to see more of this approach in the future. As always, here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode. I know it's been a really popular suggestion, so a million thanks for letting me know you wanted this app, and I hope you'll enjoy the new movie. And also, thank you to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships, and especially to our two new lovely patrons, TPHJ3W7 and Devon Lesser. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support our channel. And you get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. 
or you can also like, subscribe or write a comment telling me any type of creature you would like me to give the specky vote treatment in the show. Any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.